It's Two on the Isle with me, Charles Gross and Jeff Goodman. Tonight, David Lefkowitz joins us for reviews of South Pacific, Thurgood, from up here, and an interview with Dylan Baker of the Broadway play November. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Two on the Isle. Good evening, I'm Charles Gross, and again, welcome to Two on the Isle. And I'm Dave Lefkowitz, and welcome to you, Charlie, and welcome to everyone listening. All right, Jeff is on assignment in Thailand. We're not quite sure what he's going to be reviewing there, but I guess the we'll heat, the food, <laughs> find out when he gets back. Well, it's been a busy season, and uh, for us, it's still not over. Well, technically, I mean, well, we we still have a lot of stuff that's kind of schlunked over past all the, <laughs> the awards deadlines and the end of the yes. Broadway season. In fact, they just released the numbers on the season and it would have been mm -hmm. a record-breaking box office season again, just like it was last year, had there not been the strike. Mm -hmm. But because of that, it was just under the numbers for last year. Right. Oh well. What can you do? But one of the things that I think is helping those numbers is the Broadway revival of South Pacific. Now, interestingly, this is technically the first Broadway revival of South Pacific, although interestingly, it was revived a few years ago in Lincoln Center, but I think that was in the State Theater rather than in the Vivian Beaumont, so it doesn't necessarily ah. count as a Broadway production, although it was a Broadway caliber production. Okay, who was in that one, by the way? I don't remember. Okay. Was a, this was a long time ago. It, was, it wasn't the uh, Beatrice Arthur, Nellie Forbush. No, Beatrice Arthur was Nellie just, Forbush? No, I'm just funning with you. I'm glad that's <laughs> yeah, okay. That would be an interesting one. No, but this is the Kelly O'Hara Polo Zot yes. uh, one, and it's a good revival, very enjoyable, and good to see good to see the music. Just good, good, just border, good, good bordering on great. You know, okay, there we go. Yeah, you know, but bordering on great. Well, what now, was missing for you then? I don't know. You know, but there's a certain time you go to the theater, you expect to be moved. And I was, okay, but not quite to the extent that I had hoped to be. It's like the score, which you know, Rodgers and Hammerstein, mm -hmm. good score, but doesn't knock me over. Say like a King and I or an Oklahoma would, you know, okay. good story, good performances, enjoyed it, okay, but still, you know, I guess maybe it's because of classic, or maybe because the expectations are so high. You really expect one hundred and ten percent. And I didn't quite get that from South Pacific. Not that I didn't enjoy it, not that I wouldn't recommend it. But, but it didn't send you totally over the, the top. Right. And especially since we've had such amazing revivals this year, yes. I guess it kind of, uh, for me it, it did. First of all, for me it was my first South Pacific ever, except for the Joshua Logan film. Right. So uh, of course I knew some of the songs going into it, but I was mm -hmm. not prejudiced the way some people are going into Gypsy, right. or, or even Sunday in the Park with George, which was not so long mm -hmm. ago, and here's another revival, and, and they're judging that. But, so for me, came to it fresh, expecting it, of course, mm -hmm. to be good, right. and coming away with a great respect, not just that it's a wonderful musical, but that it was done with real finesse and subtlety and mm -hmm. care. They, and then come blasting at you. He took a very quiet approach. He took that love story and kept it Subtle. Right. Which which is good. Interestingly, it's it's about this um, nurse in the army, kind of a naive nurse, Kelly O'Hara. Mm -hmm. um, although not quite as naive as she was... Um, well, she's older. Uh, in um, Night, Night, Light, Light on the Piazza. Oh, well, yeah, and also not quite as retarded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, true. Who falls in love with a French planter who lives in the South Pacific. And it deals, the show deals mostly with war, and with big and with bigotry, right? And you know, overcoming it, and still has a lot of relevance and a lot to say. You have to be carefully on, taught. Yeah. Yes, you've got to be carefully taught. Got to. Be. You've got to be taught to be afraid of people whose eyes are oddly made, and people whose skin is a different shade. You've got to be carefully taught. I enjoyed Kelly O'Hara, who I think. She, they might as well get her an apartment at Lincoln Center because... <laughs> hey, if they'll keep the, her in musicals every year, yeah. absolutely. Because Light in the Piazza, her uh, solo show a few months ago, and this, she's been, she's like a permanent fixture there. Uh, there is blonde and curly, her curls are curly, burly, her lips are pips, I call her hips, curly and whirly. She's my baby, I'm her cow, I'm her booby, she's my track. I am caught. Um, 
Paul uh, uh, Paul Ozad, who's an opera singer. Mm -hmm. good, Broadway debut. Yes, good romantic as the as the planter. You know, nice, handsome, chiseled leading man, and they make they make a very good pair. And it, it's interesting because the show starts right when they're ha at this awkward stage. I mean, you don't see them meet; you just see them in the middle of it. Right. And that's we feel very awkward, and we feel their awkwardness. And it's a nice way, lovely, to to start off. Um, the other story is a um, Marine who falls in love with a native girl there, brought together by uh, the girl's very ambitious mother. Mm -hmm. and Who's both a comic character and also a sinister one. No, definitely not sinister. She, you don't see her as kind of sinister? She I has see, all these motives and- I see her, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, please, yeah. I see her as a hustler. And I see her as a mother who wants to, her daughter to have a better life. Well, so yeah, by any means necessary. But, I'm not, I'm not saying she's an evil character, but I, I like the dimensions of that. Of, of forgive me for um, mm -hmm. not remember. It's Bloody Mary, of course. Yes. that's the name of the character. Uh, Loretta Abel's uh, Sarah. Sarah. Mm -hmm. And so, and also she's good very, very good. Oh, and I love Danny Burston too. Mm -hmm. Yes, as as the comic relief Luther. seaman who is desperately trying to get himself to Bally High. Now he, he's also a bit of a hustler. You should see him and Mary go head in hand, and of course he comes out in the coca in the famous coconut bra. Oh well, yeah. Uh, and, uh, I mean, the tattoo on his stomach. There is nothing like a day. There is nothing you can name that is anything like a day. What's really important for me about this production is, even yes. though it's low key some of the mm -hmm. time, when it has to cook up. Mm -hmm. It does. Honey Bunch is marvelous. I'm going to watch uh, wash that man rag out of my hair. Yes. At first it starts, you're like, okay, this is kind of a neat number. And then Kelly O'Hara goes into it with a shower, and I'm like, Absolutely. whoa! I mean, you know, just total, real Broadway magic. A lot of that being her yes. in, in that particular sequence. But yes. uh, uh, and, and it's a fun number to boot. Yes. You know, again, it, I like the score. You know, there are other, frankly, other Rodgers and Hammerstein scores that I like better. Okay. I am actually familiar with, with the score. I, because um, my parents had the cast album, <laughs> right? But whose yeah. parents didn't? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And I actually have a '78 version of it. Oh my goodness! That I play in a uh, Victrola. That is so weird because mm -hmm. I have actually a '78 version of Passing Strange. The, yeah, I've got a crank up. It's got metal. It's bizarre. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll take your word for it. But all in all, you know, a satisfying and enjoyable production. Again, you know, given the reputation of the show, and again, it's which. Has is a bit bit fickle because the show hasn't been done in so long. Right. Yes. You know I, I, that's that's what I, I think is most exciting for me. Mm -hmm. That it took sixty something years to bring it back, right. and they did it just right. You know, as opposed to like when they did Bells Are Ringing and uh, and, and some of the other you shows. You know, I don't know, but you know, was Bells Are Ringing such a great show to begin with? That's that's the question. We don't know. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying that's, that we, that, it, that's, that's a true. better production would have said, yeah, or definitively would have told us. Mid-tier. But that's another story. Yes, it is. Moving on. Moving on. But fi final oh, word on South Pacific. Well, final words? I think we know our final words. You liked it. I loved it. Okay. Very good. Some enchanted evening When you find your true love When you feel her call you Across a crowded to her side and make her your own or all through your life you may dream all along. Once you have found her never let her go Once you have found